batteries have powered our devices for over half a century. Each year, 15 billion of these portable energy units are consumed, and meeting this demand requires large-scale chemical engineering. But how are rechargeable batteries made? In this video, we will discover how millions of batteries are produced every day. A battery is a device that directly converts chemical energy into electrical energy through an oxidation reduction reaction. It is composed of two electrodes, each made from a different metal. The positively charged electrode is called the cathode, while the negatively charged one is called the anode. The battery generates an electric current when its positive and negative terminals are connected through a conductive circuit in the device. This circuit carries the electricity thanks to the interaction of three essential components, two electrodes and an electrolyte. The liquid electrolyte must contain a sufficiently caustic acid to induce a chemical reaction in the metals and is essential for facilitating the transfer of ions between the anode and cathode during the chemical reaction that generates electricity. When the circuit is completed, a chemical reaction occurs between the electrodes, releasing electrons that flow from the battery, generating an electric current. In cylindrical batteries, the anode is oxidized, releasing electrons. These electrons are drawn through the circuit to the cathode, where a reduction reaction occurs. As the electrons move through the circuit, they provide the necessary electricity for the device to function. A key challenge is transporting this electricity to the device. The solution lies in a special nail that acts as a current collector, being the central component of the battery. This plant is one of the largest battery factories in Europe, producing millions of units daily. The production process begins with cutting nickel-coated steel into oval pieces. These pieces are then gradually transformed into tubes known as casings. These casings contain crucial chemical components such as carbon, which conducts electricity, a silver-based catalyst that reduces internal chemical pressure, manganese dioxide, the main ingredient of the cathode, and barium sulfate, which binds the cathode ingredients. Zinc is one of the main components of alkaline batteries, acting as the battery's anode. It is used in the form of high-purity powder. Manganese dioxide is the main active component of the cathode. In another section of the complex, a forklift unloads large bags of manganese dioxide into a hopper that feeds the material into mixers. There it is combined with graphite and other elements to form the cathode material. Manganese dioxide is excellent at capturing electrons released by zinc, but it is not a good conductor on its own, so it is mixed with graphite. This mixture helps improve the electrical conductivity of the cathode, allowing more efficient electron transfer during battery operation. A six-story building equipped with an extensive network of silos and vibrating sieves is used to produce the manganese dioxide and graphite powder. Next, a press transforms the chemical cathode powder into small hollow cylinders, producing 25,000 units per hour. During this process, control pressure is applied to compact the mixture and ensure uniform density and shape of the cathode. Once the cathode is formed, it is carefully inserted into the metal battery casing. The casing acts as the outer container of the battery, providing structural support and protection for the internal components. A machine called a casing press inserts three of these cylinders into each casing. In the next stage, a machine makes a groove at the end of the casing, facilitating its sealing. Plastic pieces called discs hold the casings while nozzles apply sealant to the top, which corresponds to the negative terminal. Then a roll of paper is cut into small strips called separators. These separators have microscopic holes that allow the flow of ions between the cathode and anode. In all batteries, it is crucial to avoid contact between the cathode and anode to prevent short circuits. A specialized machine melts adhesive with heat and deposits a small amount on the rolled separator, sealing the positive end of the paper tube. The adhesive cools and hardens in about a minute and a half while the casings move along the conveyor belt. These machines also insert two layers of a special paper that forms a protective coating, keeping the two electrodes separate. Once the separator is in place, the anode and electrolyte are added. The next machine injects the electrolyte, a solution of potassium hydroxide. The conveyor belt meanders to give the liquid electrolyte time to settle. It takes nine minutes for the electrolyte to soak the separator and reach the cathode cylinders. Zinc is the main ingredient of the anode due to its ability to easily release electrons. 
Every day, two trucks loaded with zinc ingots arrive at the plant to manufacture the anode. A special silo mixes the molten zinc with a specific powder. The zinc powder and additive mixture is combined with a small amount of binder to form a uniform paste. This process is carried out in specialized equipment that can precisely control the consistency and composition of the paste. Next, nozzles inject approximately 4 grams of zinc gel into the anode cavity. This gel consists of two-thirds zinc, while the other third is a secret formula that allows the batteries to be rechargeable. Then control pressure is applied to compress the paste and form the anode. Subsequently, a machine cuts pieces 4 centimeters long from a roll of brass wire 40 kilometers long. Brass, known for its high copper content and excellent conductivity, may be contaminated with tiny amounts of oil and dirt. To clean it, it is polished with sand until it is spotless. Once the anode is formed, it is coated with a thin metal layer that acts as a current collector. This metal coating ensures a solid and reliable electrical connection between the anode and the battery circuit. Once this stage is complete, the machine expels the cap, and another machine inserts it into the negative terminal of the battery. This extremely efficient production line assembles millions of batteries every day. The battery cap includes an essential safety element in rechargeable batteries. It can withstand high pressures, and if heat or the charging source causes excessive pressure, a small opening prevents the battery from exploding. Finally, the machine bends the tabs of the casing to enclose the contents, and a three-headed machine makes a groove in the finished battery, reducing the possibility of leaks. This sealing ensures that the electrolyte remains inside the battery and prevents leaks during use. If you have ever wondered why batteries are cylindrical, there are specific reasons for this. A cylinder allows for uniform distribution of internal pressures, facilitating a more effective hermetically sealed system. The assembled batteries undergo rigorous testing to detect any possible electrolyte leakage and to verify that all internal connections are well sealed and function correctly. An electrical testing machine connects each battery for 200 milliseconds to ensure it has at least one and a half volts. After this verification, the label is applied. The labeling machine uses light sensors to control the precise timing of labeling each battery. The plastic label not only provides technical information but also adds insulation. Then, the batteries spend 3 seconds in an oven at 198 degrees Celsius, which causes the label to shrink and fit snugly. Each battery is visually inspected to ensure the label is correctly placed. Once the quality of the assembled batteries is verified, they are packaged in boxes suitable for distribution and sale. As the battery is used, the oxidation and reduction reactions continue until the zinc in the anode is consumed or the manganese dioxide in the cathode can no longer accept more electrons. At that point, the battery is discharged and stops producing electricity. Like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel by activating notifications to continue learning.